Hey, 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 good evening or good morning, guys. All right, so it's five o'clock. I tried shooting a video just a minute ago, and for whatever reason, it only recorded seven seconds. So now we're gonna try to shoot the video yet again. <laughs> so we're gonna go through the same process as we did a while ago. Um, let's go ahead and undo that real quick. All right, so normally I shoot a lot of videos live instead of uh, putting up actual video videos. So I wanted to actually put this one up as a video itself. So got everything taken care of. I got fur or something on my fingers. Uh, but anyways, so I polished up some brass tubing and put that across here to go ahead and uh, you know make one complete disconnect for the uh, circuit itself. So I polished that up, put some nice uh, stainless steel uh, nuts on the end of it, so I thought that looked pretty cool myself. Anyhow, so let's take a last look on the inside. So obviously, you know, you're going to see our wire here for the uh, for the fan. But uh, anyhow, so we've got our overkill dual eight gauge going to each module um, for our thousand amps here. Same thing on the uh, negative as well as on the positive. Um, whenever I was fussing with the wires, I kind of made a mistake and I broke one of these. Kind of aggravated, so I pulled them all out and just replaced them all with uh, blue instead of the white. Uh, kind of like the looks of it a little bit better with the blue in there instead of that white. It's just I've got thousands of feet of that white. So that's the reason why you try to use it uh, in, in most uh, every application that I can. So we've got everything unitized together. So it's going to go off of uh, basically the master and slave concept. So any of the, whichever one of these is at the highest voltage uh, based on the percentage, um, it's going to go ahead and go off of that one, and then the rest of them are going to follow uh, as long along with the uh, load sharing. So anyhow, so we've got that taken care of. We used our Teflon wire up front. We got that all taken care of, and. I'm going to be careful not to stick my finger too close in there. But anyways, so we went ahead and put uh, uh, some wire loom not only here, but also on the bottom side as well. Uh, did that to kind of spice up the looks of it a little bit, but we also did that to give it a little extra uh, security as far as uh, for damage or anything like that. Not that it's going to ever see any damage on the inside of the cabinet. Uh, we took care of that. We used 16 gauge Teflon, and this is not just any normal Teflon. Uh, this Teflon is also rated as a high current Teflon because it actually has nickel that is uh, infused with the uh, silver, uh, silver copper. So, anyways, so I definitely want to give a shout out to the manufacturer there for that. And let's see here. So, yeah, like I said, I want to give a shout out to these guys, who is my wire supplier. So they're actually supplying me with this wire in regards to this build, um, at least on the Teflon side of things. I'm still looking into it. Um, it's just it's expensive to go ahead and have wire ordered and have it uh, shipped halfway around the world. So um, right now I've still got plenty as far as in regards to like the eight gauge wire that you've got back here, but they have an even higher end. And this is uh, some of the best you can get here in the US. Um, it's made by Stinger Pro. It is some really good high end wire. But um, what I'm looking at is actually one that's even higher yet than that. You know, mainly because it's got a higher temperature rating. Uh, the diameters of the wires are slightly bigger, unlike what you'll see in a lot of different applications. I've seen um, everybody has a particular, what we use, a U.S. gauge size here. And every time you order it, depending on what company, what manufacturer, where you get it, they're all different actual diameters. Um, even if it's just a few thousands that, you know, you're going to have all kinds of different variations. So anyways, uh, that's enough about that. Like I said, 
definitely wanted to give a uh, shout out to the uh, Ding Zung company for supplying the wire for us on this build. But let's get started here. We'll run through this real quick, get this taken care of. So let's hook this bad boy back up. This clamp is almost too big. that one here in a minute. Let's get the positive on there. There we go. Move the load tester just a little closer. Where I can get in there and get a bite to it. All right. So I'm doing it this way as far as biting into the back side of this the uh, top off instead of going to the uh, back of the studs, mainly because of the fact that I wanted to actually be able to get a really good clamp onto it without making specialized uh, uh, cables out of, you know, wire and, and what have you. So that's the reason why we're actually just clamped right in here at the point and at the source at which we're going to go ahead and be doing the uh, load test at anyways. So we are at uh, 14.5. Shut off some of these extra lights here. Well, we can get to see a good measurement here on the meter. All right, so we're going to see here we are at 14.5, all the way down on load test. Let's see if I can get both of these in here comfortably. See everything good. So I'm still getting used to this because once this starts drawing current, um, it kind of goes up really, really quick. So I'm almost kind of gun shot when I start turning this up. You'll see a small peak and then it'll take off from there. There we go. Hundred, nine hundred. There's a thousand. It's buried. Yeah, I'm shutting off the uh, load tester. <laughs> Maxed out the load tester before the uh, gauge got up there. Yep. And I just kicked out my uh, breaker, guys. So, all right. So I've over I've overextended it. Which I've ran this pretty hard because this makes uh you know three tests right in a row here where I've maxed it out for everything it was worth. Once you exceed basically the uh, thousand amps, it is gonna kick out. This can't read fast enough to stay up with this. So, yeah, I maxed this out where it was buried, buried at a thousand amps. And this still didn't didn't catch up to it fast enough. So if I can creep it up, creep it up, you'll see it actually go to a thousand on there and hold. But it'll go into protect mode. And the fans, you can hear the fans, they're already kicking up on the you know, power supplies where we really loaded this thing down. So, one more time. Bob. Um, 
Say there's 1,030, 1,040. Now once you get once you get to that thousand, it'll let you take it a little further, but I think this uh, I think this amp tester is actually a little over overkill on that. Oops. Well, let's just leave that on. I'm gonna undo this. Ooh, mama. All right. Set those on the ground so that they can kind of cool down a little bit, guys. All right. So let's get our fan plugged in here. That way you guys can see what that looks like. Start getting some air in there. So once these are unitized together, they will draw more than a thousand amps. Uh, but once you reach that thousand amps, um, it has to take it up kind of slow at that point, mainly because of the fact that you are right on the, you know, you're right on the uh, kill zone. And I want to say thank you again to Mr. Carlock. who provided us with these beautiful grills. Uh, I went ahead and painted this one with a uh, textured paint just to kind of give it a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of pizzazz since we've got all this aluminum here i just wanted to break up uh, break up the color of it a little bit same thing with the face the face normally normally on a big one like this usually what i'll do is i'll wrap it this one is not wrapped this is actually a painted finish that i uh, painted and then put it in the oven for 30 minutes at uh, 200 degrees and bake the finish on so Alrighty guys, hopefully you enjoyed the uh, quick little video on this. Like I said, it is for sale and it is ready to go out the door. Um, the only reason why I didn't get it a little bit sooner guys is I actually had to install a cable on the other side of the wall and run me a uh, extension cord because my service panel that I've got over here or service uh, outlet, uh, it's only rated for 30 amps and it only had a 20 amp uh, fuse on it, or excuse me, 20 amp circuit breaker on it. So it wasn't enough to even remotely handle the load that I've got here. But now that I've got uh, a cable where I can actually run this in and start testing big supplies like this, I can go right off the uh, panel itself. Um, I just need an eight foot cord to run over to the workbench, mainly because it's more economical than running the uh, 50 feet that I need in order to wrap it up around and over and this way and that way in order to get over here to the uh, service bench where we do all this stuff. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, it's been a pleasure to sit down and build this. And we will go on to the next great and wonderful project, whatever that may be. Uh, if you are new to the channel, I would appreciate it if you guys would hit the like and subscribe. Uh, we get into all kinds of neat stuff here. I'm going to finish putting the screws in as soon as we uh, get off this video and we'll go to the next project. All right, guys, take care. God bless.